Hello and welcome to My World of Work live CODART session. I'm Emma and we're joined today by Morna. Hi there. Uh, we are going to take you through our virtual CODART. OK, so we're just going to carry on, get on, get on with it. In the session today, we are going to discuss whether coding can ever be art, have a go at being a web designer, recognise some of the skills you have used, and hopefully identify jobs related to this activity. Okay, so let's kick off with the question, what is art? Obviously, this is a question that is completely subjective. You will have completely different opinions to both Morna and I, and that's absolutely fine. In the dictionary, art is defined as the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. OK, and it mentions at the bottom now you can see it painting, music, literature and dance. However, <clears throat> both Morna and I feel that, you know, that's maybe quite a limited um, definition of art um, and we're just going to throw into the mix some different forms. So we've got things like sculpture, which is the Kelpies, um, obviously on a grand scale, but you can get really small pieces of sculpture as well. We've got things like graffiti art and um, music. We've got obviously things like the written word, literature, poetry. We've got traditional art in the sense that you and I might the first think of the word art might pop to mind traditional painting or drawing. And then we've got dance as well. So like we say, it's entirely up to you what you think of as art. OK, and it's just to get you thinking really about what that might mean to you. And what about this? Could this be art? So this was actually generated by an algorithm and an algorithm is just basically a mathematical equation uh, written by George Nees in 1968 and was known as generative art. OK, so some people would say that this is not art because it's generated by an algorithm. Other people might think, well, it is art, some kind of pictorial representation of something. So it could just be in the eye of the beholder. So a few things that we looked into around can code and ever be art, we sort of picked up a, a, a thread on Twitter and these are just quotes ta taken from there. Um, so somebody's written, coding is absolutely not art. Art is about painting and music and dance. And coding is a scientific process about solving complex problems within the available instruction set. Uh, and then they've gone on to say, please stop spreading foolish romantic ideas. It's art. It's not art. It's science. So somebody feels quite strongly about that, obviously. So somebody else has written, nope, as a matter of fact, coding is anti-art. If writing software is about problem solving, then code will never be art. At best, we the developers create beautiful hammers. OK, so a few quite strong opinions there. Then we've got a kind of opposite opinion, if you like. So when people hear the word art, they think about painting, music, literature, but there is more to it. So art, in my honest opinion, about expressing your thoughts, imagination, emotions, ideas, using some creative process. So that we can say coding is definitely art if a coder is going through some creative process. So just a sort of the flip side of the coin there, just to get you thinking about what that might mean. And today, Morn is going to take you through this creative process. It's time to get creative, OK? And hopefully at the end of the session, you might have even changed your mind about whether or not you think code can ever be art. <laughs> so I'm going to pass you back to Morna. Thank you very much. So the first thing that I need us to do is to go to a website called sololearn.com. So that would be www.sololearn.com. And once you've done that, it should bring you up to this screen that I've got on now. So hopefully, Emma, you can see that as well. Yeah, I that can see up. that. Super fantastic. Now, just to let you know, um, this video is, I mean, it's, it's being recorded. So the good thing about it is you can pause at any point. So I think Emma and I need to make that quite clear to you if at any point you're not sure or you need to maybe sort of stop it so you can catch up on your side that's absolutely fine then you can just press play and, and, and off we go again so um if you need to stop here to get this up onto your screen 
best place to do it, www.sololearn.com. Once you're on to this screen, uh, you'll notice that it's got a few different options here. One saying sign in, you don't have to worry about that because this is a free piece of software. If you want to create an account at a later date, go ahead but just for the purposes of this video we're going to use the free aspect so go into the code playground for me now and just let that load up and once you get to the code playground you'll see that there's quite a lot of different chats going on in bits and pieces the one that we're wanting to choose is the little green box um, on the left hand side that says new code okay so that's the part that we want here click onto the new code and we get to this section here all right so remember if you're needing to pause just click stop and catch up when we get to this part here where it says what language do you want to use for coding it's the very first option the one that says web all right select that one and now once that loads up what we have here is we have four columns all right so we have a column uh, two columns with some writing in it and two columns that look blank uh, we have an html a css a gis which also stands for javascript and then a blank column right at the end now the blank column is where your code um, will appear once it's all created okay so that's kind of where whatever you type in will go there in picture form but that might make more sense once we get started. Now, the first thing that we want to do is the text that's in the HTML and the CSS. We don't need that, that's just sort of examples. So what we can do is just tap into it and just start to delete it away. Don't want it, so completely empty. Go into the CSS, tap, 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 tap away. And there's nothing in there in JS, okay? So we want CSS, HTML and JS to can be completely clear. Now, when I think about sort of, um, Emma said at the beginning, like thinking about being a web developer, this is what web developers use when they're setting up a new website, for example, they use um, HTML, CSS and JS to build it, to sort of set it up. HTML in my brain and like a little bit of description is like the builder, all right? So if you've got an idea, you first of all sort of set down the foundation instructions, the building instructions, and that's where HTML comes in, HTML, builds the foundations then they pass it over to css who is the artist they're like great love it that's fantastic i like your foundations but i could change that here i could make that a different size i could make that a different color so they do all the lovely artistic side to it and then gis is like the wizard basically they take everything they're like oh great i love what you did here but i could make that um appear here i could maybe shoot in some text over here i could make pictures um appear out of random over here so they sort of make it all bells and whistles and fancy things now for the purposes of this website we're not going to be doing gis today but that's maybe something that you could pick up on at a later time so for today we're going to just make some basic shapes all right we're going to be making a square a circle and a triangle and it might not sound very fancy but all these things you need to know the basics to be able to sort of make more exciting things we need to we need to learn to walk before we can run as it were on coding now when we're typing uh, first of all we need to type in an instruction we need to give it a sentence all right so here's what we want to do the first thing that we want to do is to find a pointy bracket now emma will keep me right here but on my keyboard a pointy bracket is next to the m for mother uh, key and in order to get it i have to press my shift okay and then i've got a little pointy bracket here now uh solo learn source tries to help you as you go along and we'll fill in the rest of the sentence for you but we'll do it longhand first of all okay the next thing that we need to type is div which stands for division and that's used to mark a section of code all right then we take a little space and type class c-l-a-s-s -S. and class is used to assign that division a name all right and then next thing that we need is an equal to sign now my equal to sign is top corner on the right hand side um next to my like back uh, yeah backspace button so equal to 
Then what I need is I need um, inverted commas, quote marks, all right? Now to get those, they are sharing a key with my number two, but I have to uh, use my shift key again, okay? And then what's happened is it's brought up the first one and the end one, which is perfect, and your cursor's flashing in the middle. Now I said the class is used to assign that division a name. The first uh, shape that I'm going to make is a square. So I'm literally going to say that the name I'm giving it is square. Now you could type square or you could type SQU, whatever you want, but I'm just going to make it nice and simple so I can keep my brain right. I'm going to call it square. Remember, if you're needing to stop at any point, just, just pause as we're going along. So we've got pointy bracket div. Then we've got a space, word class, an equal to sign. Then we've got our quote marks. Inside that, we've called it square. Now, just pop your cursor onto the other side of your quote mark, OK? And then close that off with the pointy bracket going in the other direction, all right? So we've got a little bit of a sentence in coding language, but we're not quite finished yet. Then we do the first point bracket that we did so they kind of point into each other then forward slash d i v look solo learns being dead nice and thinks it knows what you want and close that off with another pointy bracket okay so that is a bit long looks a bit complicated um essentially all this stuff here like the pointy brackets the forward slashes even when we get into the next part we'll use colons and semicolons these are things these are all called syntax syntax sorry and it's essentially like punctuation in a sentence so if you were writing something in english and you didn't use full stops or commas or anything like that it wouldn't make sense so it's the same thing in coding you have to give it this syntax so that the computer knows okay so we've got our instruction in the html brilliant but we're not done yet because now we need to hand off to css so into css um tap into that what you need to do is full stop okay so a little stop then literally type out the word which is the name that you gave it so i called mine square okay so i'm just going to type that again s q u a r e now I want a curly bracket. Now in the curly brackets on my computer is next to the P, but again, like before, um, it's sharing a key with the square bracket. So to get the curly one, you have to do shift. And it's brought up two because it knows that it, it's got one to open it and one to close it just like brackets do. So return down to get a new line. And here's where we're going to put in the height the width and we're going to give our square a color okay now this is your creation now so i'll i'll use a certain height but if you want to change it that's absolutely fine you can do or you can copy mine and then change it later on it's totally up to yourself so height you need to type in the word height h e i g h t okay then you're doing a colon so that's two dots right now i'm going to do 50 pixels so 50 px okay everything's in pixels and then finish that sentence with a semicolon all right take a new line so we've just got the height now we need a width w i d t h same again semicolon uh, sorry colon and it's a square so it should really be 50. if you changed it to 70 then you'd end up with a rectangle but you can have a play around with that and see what happens a uh, semicolon one more line because now we need to give it a color so we type in background and look it's telling you that it thinks it knows what you want but we'll type it all out longhand for now so it's background dash color and also just a little thing here as a heads up solo learn is an american site so spell color the american way we spell it with a U, but the American uh, language doesn't. So just C O L O R and then colon. And here's where you can start to be a bit creative. What color do you want to do? I'll just do blue for now. OK, semicolon. Now, also, Solo Learn is really good because it tells you it starts to color code all your text. So look, we've got height, width and background color all in this lovely blue. If I had spelt something incorrectly, it wouldn't go that blue color, it would go white. So look, if I spelt color the way that we would spell it, okay, so put a U in there. 
it's like well not quite right and it's got a little not something's wrong underneath it so you can just make sure that you are spelling it correctly okay so i had it as blue didn't i go okay so i'm saying this i don't know what i've done now I've done something wrong there we go silly 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 okay so we've got uh, our instruction, our building instruction in HTML. We've got our artistic instruction in CSS. Once we're happy with that, we can click run and what we will create will appear in that fourth column. <gasps> there we go. We have a blue square. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So that's what we wanted to do. So stop, start, pause, do whatever you want. Everything in SolarLearn is made of squares. OK, so the next shape that we're going to do is we're going to make a circle. So if we want to make something appear here, we have to give the instructions in HTML and CSS. If you just started to type it into one and then pressed run, nothing would appear because there has to be the two instructions that work hand in hand with each other. So go back to the beginning. Now, here's where you can start to sort of cut corners and, and save some time. You can either take a new line and literally copy that out long ways, or what you can do is I sometimes just like to highlight it and then I do control C, which is a short way to copy, go under the line and then control V, which is the short way to paste. But I'm making a circle this time. So the only thing that I'm going to change is the orange. So that's the name. All right. So that's the name that we've given to that uh, division. So I'm just going to tap into that there just next to the E. Delete that away and type. Circle. All right. So that's the only thing different there. Coming into the CSS column, though, so just go behind the lovely curly bracket that closed off your square instruction and take a couple of new lines. Now I like to separate out my instructions so I can see it all. And exactly like we did before where we did dot square and then curly brackets, we're going to do that again, but this time change it to circle. So dot circle, curly bracket, and it brings up your two, one to open and one to close. Just like before everybody, we're going to give it a height, a width and a color. So you can just do it the same that you did before. So height, I want to change the height, that's fine. I maybe go for 70 this time. So 70 PX. So remember it's height, colon, so your two dots, your number, PX, semicolon, new line, width, on. Hmm, 70, we'll just do that again. PX, semicolon, background. Background dash, correct. Uh, red. Again, you can choose whatever colors you want. You can choose whatever sizes you want, okay? So once you're happy with that, you can press run. <gasps> Ta-da! But... I've got a slightly larger square. It's a red square, but it's still a square. And I said that we were going to make a circle this time. Yes, we are. So you'll notice that the instructions that we did essentially were the exact same as one for the square, but you just need to give it an additional line to make it into a circle because everything sort of code art wise is made up of squares and then you just adjust it ever so slightly. So Go back to your background color in your circle and you're just going to add a new line. So drop it down. And the only difference here that you're doing is we're going to make a border, B-O-R-D-E-R. -E and we are going to do dash radius for a circle. OK. Colon. And... Then the next thing that we're going to do is to give it a size. So I made mine 70, so we'll just make it 70 again. Semicolon, 
spelling's all right that's fine okay so border dash radius i think we're good and click run <gasps> and there we go so we've changed it into a circle okay perfect so that's the only difference if you're adding in the circle to make the circle become a circle you need to tell it to become a circle so you obviously give it that additional instruction so what we're going to do now is we're going to make a triangle so remember in order to get something in the last column you need to have instructions in the first two we can either copy um the instruction like we did before or this time i'll i'll type it out a uh, longhand so pointy bracket d i v space c l s for class uh equal to and then uh, quote marks now i said we're making a triangle so i'm literally going to call it triangle da, 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 da. pop over onto your other side of your quotes close that off with a pointy bracket open up another one forward slash div then close it off all right so that's the whole of that there so just catch up type it in take your time then come over to your CSS column. Just like before, separate them out so you can see what you're looking at. So just going to jump down. Remember, at the beginning, we had to do dot square and dot circle. So it all matched up just like before. I'm sure you're probably way ahead of me on this time. You're like dot triangle. So here we go. Triangle. Curly bracket. Perp. Okie dokie. So we're going to do the long version, all right? It's fine. Don't get stressed out about it. It'll be totally worth it in the end. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to do a height. I always do things in the exact same order each and every time because it just keeps me right. So height, colon, we'll just do a wee baby one this time, 20, semicolon, width, colon, 20. Our background color. Da, 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 da. Green. Okay. Da, 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 da. Yep. Okay. So that's fine. Happy with that. Happy with that. Let's press run because I think you're probably already going. Hold on a wee minute, Morna. You said we're making a triangle. That looks really like the square again. You'd be absolutely right. There we go. We're going to build up on it build up on it stick with me we're gonna get there so the next thing that we need to do is what I want to do is to put a big border around that little square new line literally just going to type in border okay and we want to just make it a nice decent size so I'm going to do 60 px for that and then solid gray okay so i just want a big thick border around my baby square so now we can click run for that there we go okay so if you weren't sure what i was meaning this is what i'm this is what i'm meaning now but remember you can stop and start as we go so again it's all very well me saying this i've got a baby square and then i've got a bigger square but if you can visualize it inside that big square you can actually make four triangles that all point in towards the baby square and that's where we're going to get our triangle from all right so for this now what we just need to do is to just start to sort of section it up now the first thing where we've got border uh, semi uh, border colon 60 px solid gray inside there now just next to the word border after the r at the end of the word put your cursor in there and do dash and we're going to do top okay so we're going to break it down into top right bottom and left so that's the first one and i can leave it now as gray all right because also so we can see them i'm going to make them all different colors so i've made the first one gray that's fine then i go around clockwise so border dash right oh what's happened here why is that going oh and there we go so solo learn was telling me that something was a bit wrong there so thank you solo learn so border dash right uh, on 60 px solid <gasps> yellow yeah yellow this is why i start to forget oh 
all the colours of the rainbow. Uh, and Marna, I, I assume your borders probably need to be the same number of pixels. Each yeah, one, yes, that's even. Yeah, it's even. Yeah, meant to be even exactly. Yeah. Make them nice and even so that you're cutting it up. Okay, so when you're when you're sectioning, uh, making it into these triangles, make them all the same size. Very good point. Okay, so we've got border top, border right. Next one is border bottom. B O border bottom. Uh, Sixty solid. Purple, my favourite colour. There we go. And last one, border left. Sixty solid. <gasps> Need a colour. Orange. <laughs> oh, what have I done? Oh. Cancel. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so we've got border top, right, bottom, left. The colours all look fine. Solo learns saying that my spelling's all right because everything's that lovely, different. Yep. Okay. Give it a shot. See what happens. Ah, there we go. Ooh, Ta -da! Pretty. That is very pretty, isn't it? It's kind of like an optical illusion. Um. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Right. So that's fine. So we've got. We're we're still not quite there. They're like, yep, Morna, brilliant. That looks lovely, but it's still not a triangle. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a triangle at all. But we've got kind of four versions of a triangle. So we now don't want the wee green square. Okay, it's very cute, but but we don't actually need it. So at the very, very top, where you've got height and width is 20, just make it zero. Doop, doop. And we don't even need the green square anymore. So that whole line that says background dash color green, just going to pop behind that and delete 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 de de okay now we can test what happens run oh, there we go da -da -da -da. lovely 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 we're nearly there we're nearly there now you get to choose which one of the triangles you want to keep you can keep whichever one you want i'm going to keep the purple one it's my favorite one favorite color so for the gray yellow and orange where it says solid gray i'm just going to delete the word gray but keep my semicolon at the back and type in the word transparent now it's obviously helping me here in case your spelling's not great like mine jump down keep my semicolon and delete away yellow trans there we go i'm just going to return that because it's telling me there thank you very much so learn i'm keeping the purple one and then we're going to the orange one but remember you can keep whichever color you like it's your design okay so we change the 20 and the 20 from the original to zero we got rid of the little color square the wee baby one that was inside and we've changed three of those triangles to solid transparent and we've kept the color that you wanted to do which is now going to be left as your triangle so the only thing now that i should be left with on that screen is my original blue square my original red circle and my brand newly created purple triangle here we go what, what? there we go <laughs> okay so I'm really happy with that. Lovely, lovely. Perfect. So you can see by just adding a little additional couple of lines, you can change squares into all different shapes. OK, so let me see if I wanted to make the circle. We'll leave it as that height. But what if we change the width? So all I do is I just go back up to my circle section. So look, it's all because we've we've section we've we've spaced it out. I can see where this sort of starts and ends and I'm going to take the 70 and I'll put 120. Just play around with numbers now. It's great. <laughs> Looks a bit weird. It's kind of stretched out that circle. Um, I think it would be good to do it the other way, Morna, and then it might look like a body. And then oh, okay. the idea that you can start creating different <gasps> things. It like doesn't have to just be shapes. You can start creating I a like your thought process. I like your thought process. So if you've changed it to height, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> You could change it to yellow. There we go. Press run. So remember each time just press run. So there we go. And actually, if you wanted to, we've kind of got the start. We could shove that blue triangle further down the yellow section and it would be the sort of the start of a minion's pair of trousers. 
Oh, that's a great idea. So how? Do, yeah. So let let's see how we would move them around. So if I want to move that square down, as I said, so I'll go to the go to my square section here, underneath uh, at the back of the blue where it says uh, blue, and then it's the semicolon. Start a new line because again we have to give it an additional instruction. So we're instructing now our shapes on how to move. Okay. So we do position. Uh, uh, relative, <laughs> I can't think of the word there. <laughs> so position colon relative semicolon, and there we go. Solonin said yes, that's correct. That spelling is correct. I want to move my square down. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. So we're here we go. <laughs> so, so we have to remember the shapes are like they're lying on their back. Yes. So if you were imagine you're lying on your back and you're the shape, it's kind of flipped around. Yes. So I think of it like if you were to do like a dance class, for example, the instructor would they'd put out their right hand, but they would say move to your left. So it's like a mirror image. So this is where moving the shapes gets a little bit tricky. You have to treat it like a mirror. So yes. when we say move to the our right, it's going to move to its left. <laughs> But we want this blue shape to move ever so slightly left and then it's down. flipped, isn't it? But it's not down, it's to the top. <laughs> See? Yes, yes, yeah. no, you're right. See. So again, <laughs> Emma Emma has this wonderful visual where she sort of imagines herself lying down and she's like, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Which I'm like, I that Yes, I can see that. Sometimes it totally works for me. I'm like, ah, yes. So exactly, you kind of have to make yourself the blue square. So I want my blue square on my screen. I want it to move to the right, but it's at the blue square's left. So we are going to move it ever so slightly to the left. Uh, and it's ever so slightly. I mean, it could just be ten. But again, this I is where I think ten. Ten. Yeah. Would sound... Ten. It's just you're just practicing. You can you can try. It's trial and error. So we can run that. <gasps> there we go. So it has. It's just popped it over Perfect. to the side. Okay. Now I want it to move down. Okay. So take a new line. Bottom fifty. Try that. Oh, sorry, Emma. Yep, sorry, I wasn't paying attention there. You, you exactly told me because it's an opposite, so I wasn't wanting to go bottom. Top! Hey! There we go. Okay, so it's not quite, so you can just keep moving it. Okay. Oh, that's mm -hmm. cool. Nearly there, nearly there. Maybe 100. And if we wanted it to be a wee pair of minion trousers, we could just make the width ever so slightly longer. So then two, sort of stretch it out. Oh. We can make that eight. Oh, not quite. This is the great thing, though. You can just try it and try it and try it until yeah. we're just playing around now. Right. Yeah, we're just. <laughs> Faffing about. We're just exactly. And do you know what? Faffing is how you learn. It is how you learn. So instead of making a pair of minion trousers now, I'm going to be a wee bit wild and I'm going to make a house. So I'm going to drop that square, which is now not a square, it's now a rectangle. I'm going to put it underneath the purple. Um Marna, just a quick question yes. here. Yes. So if you did, if we were going to carry on doing our minion and we wanted circles, mm -hmm. do we just go back and add in another circle and we just have to call it circle two yes circle yep three that's exactly right exactly the same process we have to go back to the html and put in an additional command yep. circle two and then yep. into the css and put circle two you're absolutely yeah. right so whatever just you're perfect. yeah so whatever you're doing you have to put into the the html column and then have it over it so you will end up with a huge css line of instructions You'll have a lot in the HTML, but because you've got more instructions to write into the CSS, like the color, the height, the width, you know, all that kind of stuff. If you started to get a little bit more confident with your building, you know, if you wanted to make a minion, for example, which um, so he would have a, he would have two eyes and, you know, some legs and things like that. So you could put right eye 
you know, it, it doesn't have to be circle. You could literally Got call it. it right eye. So you know which one it is. Yeah. That's exactly, yep, that's it. So, um, but then obviously what you write in HTML, you have to write in CSS. So right eye and your instruction, left eye and your instruction, mouth, you know, whatever you want to do that way. Great tip. So square, we can keep dropping it down. So we're just finishing up here. I don't want to hold us back too much. So I was probably going to. 250 drop you down oh right and then actually do you know what i'll just go to my triangle and i can just pop my triangle up <laughs> so underneath my triangle position colon relative semicolon um going up so we'll do bottom Um, oh, just too much. Yeah, love it. And then move the square ever so slightly over. Come on, square. I would say. Oh, <laughs> this is just <laughs> trial and error, isn't it? Oh, oh. I will not give up until I get this. Yes! yes. There we go. And then, do you know what? Just to finish off, I don't want my circle to be that anymore. I'm going to put my circle back to 70 because I want it to be a nice yellow sunshine. Oh, man! That was annoying. So where's my square? Go down. Whoops. It's all going wrong, Emma. Oh God. <laughs> actually do you know what because that's like what you can do instead of doing top you can actually do minus as well that's another little hint there so oh, that's a good tip so see you kind of dropped it all the way down oh, so yeah, we don't, that's good. yes we don't need it at minus 90 we can actually do it to minus 70 and that should pop it up a little bit more so Here we go. That's nice. There we go. So we have to. So I would say everybody, just play around. And I think again, harking back to what Emma said at the beginning, that's the whole point of art. It is whatever you make it. It's there's no right or wrong way to do it. And sometimes you get happy accidents. So you're like, this wasn't what I was expecting to happen, but that works perfectly. So it's all a matter of just seeing how it goes. So just and through the coding process, you have made a beautiful picture exactly exactly so i will leave you to sort of have a play around with that a member you can stop and start do whatever you want but just to finish off i will pass you back to emma and she'll just finish off for you so hope you have fun with it brilliant thank you morna that was brilliant i'm going to go away and have a a quick play with that solo <laughs> and it looked really good fun so just to tie this all together then we said at the beginning where we're going to think about the skills that we have used and um, i'm hoping that a lot of you might have seen this already with your careers advisor in school called the career management skills and it's the jigsaw and essentially there's four parts to that self it's all about you strengths all about your skills horizons about what's out there so that could be job apprenticeship um, university college and then networks it's about identifying who can help you with them um, potential career choices or subject choices and it could obviously be your parents and your teachers your career advisors but also your wider network so maybe your friends parents work in an industry that you might be interested in and remember the best people to talk to about an industry that you're interested in is the people that actually work in it because they will be able to give you actual day-to-day -day what it's like okay but in terms of the strengths and the skills that we've used today, we've identified what we think um, are sort of the key ones. Creativity, because you, hopefully we'll all have something that looks completely different to Morna's. Um, communication in terms of your listening skills. Time management, because you've had to work um, probably within some kind of time constraint. You've had resilience, because I pretty much bet most of you have managed to create three, sh three shapes, so well done problem solving so when your code maybe hasn't worked your ability to go back and think about where you've maybe missed a space or put in the wrong kind of syntax 
That's excellent. Listening skills is a really important one. So the fact that you've listened to us too um, for a fair whack time and, fo and followed those instructions. And the last one we've identified is attention to detail. So the ability to actually really copy, which is actually quite complex programming. So that's really good. Obviously, there'll be lots more that we've not, but these were just the main ones that we've picked out. OK. So in terms of those skills, what jobs do you think these or careers these might relate to? Again, this is not um, an exhaustive list. If you go on to um, My World of Work, you will find a whole host of jobs and careers that we haven't mentioned here that are pertinent to the skills we've just used. But just um, to identify a few, things like a virtual reality designer, um, a games designer or a games developer, um, we've got a web editor and developer. Obviously, you've been using the language of web editing, so that's particularly pertinent. Uh, an augmented reality or virtual reality programmer. An app developer. I'm just going to take a pause here because this is the lady. She's a Japanese lady. She's in her 80s and she's actually been designing apps for her generation. So maybe things that they would need to get through their day to day life. So it's just to give you an idea that you know, technology and apps and games and virtual reality is not just for younger population. These are technologies that can be used for assisted living. Um, and particularly, you know, we have quite a digital literate elderly population. So just to bear that in mind, and you're never too old if you're a parent listening to this, you're never too old to change career uh, to get involved in something if you have a, an idea. Um, a big data engineer. So again, this is something I, I had to go and look up what a big data engineer was. But essentially, we create millions and millions of bits of data. And most of the data has been created in just the last couple of years, as we've seen the explosion of smartphones and um, you know iPads and all those kind of things. Um, and a big data engineer will take all the data and try and collate it. And so they work often for marketing companies. And um, so, for example, if you've looked at something on your Amazon account and you'll see an advert pop up on your email or your Facebook or your Instagram or whatever, that's a big data engineer behind writing those algorithms to to basically market you and um, send you specific marketing details and an ethical hacker. So again, this is something that you might know about a hacker, like your data is in danger of being hacked. But an ethical hacker is somebody who would potentially work for a government, for example, um, looking to make sure that there are no terrorist organisations out there planning an attack, for example, but also they work for big businesses and they're employed by businesses to attempt to hack into their systems. And it's a way of making sure that like our banking apps are actually secure. So you could, if you like the idea of hacking, you could be an ethical hacker. Uh, so for more information, I've just popped, we've just popped a few websites up here. We've got My World of Work, which hopefully most of you will have a log on to. And if not, you can get registered on that. It's quite easy. You don't have to register. and um, You can just go on and have a look around the job profiles and see what's on there. There's also more um, information about apprenticeships. So uh, on the apprenticeships.scot website, we've got Digital World and also we've got the SDS YouTube channel. So if you've really enjoyed this session and you were looking for some more, we've also got the games design and the cracking cryptography will be available as a little video just like this is um, on our YouTube channel, as well as our virtual meet the experts. So we've actually been meeting experts in a whole range of different careers and asking them some questions and the videos of those sessions will also be on that YouTube channel. So it just remains for us to say thank you very much today for joining us. And we hope you've really enjoyed that. So bye from me. And bye from me. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. bye.